extract twice the work and half the time, you need a solid plan. In Scrum, such a plan is known as a sprint plan. And what follows, hopefully, is going to be a complete breakdown of the same. Hi all, I'm Upasana from Edureka and in this module we are going to talk all about sprint plans. But before we begin, let's look at our agenda for today. So we are going to start out with what is a sprint plan and who are its participants. Then we are going to talk a little bit about the prerequisites of effective sprint planning. Then we are going to talk about what exactly is a sprint planning meeting, the elements and the core components of it. Then we are going to talk about the sprint planning time box followed by deliverables in a sprint plan, summary reports, and finally, a few common merits and pitfalls of sprint planning. Also, kindly take up this time to go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you never miss an update from the Edureka YouTube channel. So without much ado, let's get started. So what is a sprint plan? So for the development of any product, you need a plan where your team can figure out what is their goal, what has to be done to achieve that goal and how that goal has to be achieved. Now a sprint plan is meant to answer all these questions in the Scrum framework. So these sprint plans are meant for the team to determine the product backlog items that they will be working on during the period of that sprint. Now this part discusses their initial plan for completing what needs to be done in the most optimized fashion. Now, most teams may find it highly helpful to establish a sprint goal and use that as a basis by which they determine which product backlog items they will be working upon during the phase of that sprint. So as you can see, the elements that go into the planning are the definition of done, team capacity, the product backlog and the retrospective commitments. What happens is that you analyze, evaluate and select the product backlogs for the sprint and the sprint goal gives you direction. And how it happens is when you decompose your actionable plan into smaller parts to achieve that particular goal. And the result of all this is your sprint goal or your forecast of the sprint goal and you create a sprint backlog which is a list of things that has to be done during the phase of this sprint. Next, let's look at who are its participants. Now the sprint plans typically involve the entire team. You have the product owner, which is the person with the bright ideas. This is the one that proposes the sprint goal and priorities, as well as identifying the backlog items. Then we have the scrum master, that facilitates sprint planning in order to ensure that discussion is effective and that the appropriate product backlog items are included in the sprint backlog. He or she also ensures that there is an agreement to the sprint goal and the definition of done. And finally, you have the team. The development team or just the scrum team determines the number of product backlog items that they forecast that they will be able to complete on time. And they also discuss how the product has to be delivered on time. Now that we've spoken about the participants, let's move on to the prerequisites of an effective sprint planning. Now there are certain prerequisites you need to take care of to hold effective sprint planning such as prioritize user stories and product backlog, planned capacity of the team, and the definition of done. So basically what I'm trying to say here is that your user stories, your story points should be in a prioritized order and well-groomed so that before you start out with the plan, you know exactly at what priority each of your product backlog is. Then you have planned capacity where you look at how much each member of your development team can work in how much time as well as the definition of done. Every member of the scrum team should agree with when should you consider the product to be ready. It is a complete list of check boxes which have to be checked for a product to be considered as done. Moving on. Let's take a look at the sprint planning time box. Now, 
For a one month or a four week sprint, the meeting should last eight hours. For a two week sprint, this time is four hours. So basically as a rule of thumb, you multiply the number of weeks in your sprint by two hours to get your total sprint planning meeting length. During this meeting, you discuss your sprint goals, identify stories, groom those stories, understand the requirements of this particular sprint, identify dependencies, identify risks, estimate the story points, plan the team capacity, and finally break down tasks in order at which they have to be done. Now let's look at the sprint planning meeting. Now the sprint planning meeting is basically split into two parts. The first part of the first step is scope. Now the team selects which items from a prioritized list of existing product backlog items they predict they will be able to complete during the sprint. The following questions are the ones which may be asked on the meeting agenda. What is the sprint goal? Now this is a decision filter to determine which product backlog items to include in the sprint. What product backlog items are ready or already done and contribute towards the sprint of the goal. Who is available for this particular sprint? Here you are trying to identify any vacations, holidays or other activities that will impact everybody's availability during the sprint. What is the team's capacity? Assuming everybody is available. As we have discussed before, here you talk about the sprint capacity. What has to be included in the sprint backlog based on the sprint goal and the team's capacity? And finally, how confident does each team member feel about meeting the sprint goal? After discussing all these potential questions, you go ahead with the plan. Now in this step, the team discusses how they will deliver the selected product backlog items in detail. This may include identifying tasks for product backlog items, grooming those tasks as story points, weighing in any dependencies between the items and signing up for the initial product backlog items to each member of the team. Here you also discuss the definition of done after how many quality checks and after completion of how many tasks do you consider your product or this particular version of your product as done or ready. Teams are continually tasked with producing a releasable improvement to the software, potentially producing shippable products time boxed to a specific number of weeks. Next, let's talk a little bit about deliverables. Now, Agile project teams usually use six main artifacts or deliverables to develop products and track progress. It also enables a project team to outline a general time frame for when you will develop and release those requirements. Now created during the sprint planning meeting, the sprint goal is this aim for the sprint. It can be met through implementation of product backlogs, and it provides guidance to the development team on why the increment is built. Now the sprint goal or the deliverable gives the sprint some flexibility regarding the functionality implemented within the sprint. Moving on, let's discuss the summary report. A sprint report or a sprint summary report is designed to help you understand your team's performance across completed sprints. You can quickly understand the work that has been completed and the ones that were returned to the backlog with the sprint or summary reports. Now this is a basic template for a sprint planning summary report. You have your sprint goal, your sprint duration, your sprint schedule, your capacity summary, your task hour breakdown, your commitment summary, and finally, story details. Sometimes, and this is optional, there is also a sprint summary document, which contains very brief details of what work was done during the sprint, when the sprint was, who was on the team, any key decisions that were made during the course of the sprint, and perhaps a few important metrics. With that, let's move on to the merits of a sprint plan.
Now the main benefit of a sprint planning is visibility. This allows a team to start a new sprint with an understanding of what they will work on for that particular sprint. And it serves as an initial plan for how they are going to approach that work. Apart from this, there are also many other benefits of the sprint planning. Mainly, you have scope visibility, task discovery, optimal usage of capacity, improvement in team collaboration, and control scope creep, which basically means continuous uncontrolled growth of the scope. Now, sprint planning can become highly ineffective when your team does not have a well-refined product backlog from which you have to draw product backlog items. But this can be easily addressed by establishing a consistent backlog refinement process that results in a set of product backlog items that meet an agreed to definition of done. Now these product backlog items can then serve as the potential product backlog items to consider for the inclusion in the sprint. Another common obstacle that arises when you don't establish a specific goal for the sprint and wind up with a set of unrelated items that everybody has to work on. Now this results in a sprint's worth of work but no noticeable progress. Having that said, sprint plans are one of the most original scrum events and were created as a part of the framework. Typically used when your team is following either scrum or scrum ban or any other time boxed iteration. If you follow a flow based approach, you may still find it effective to understand this subject to build a shared understanding of the items that are queued up to work on next. With that, I would like to close this session. Thank you and have a great day. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!